What's up, guys? It's Alex Sanchez again, and joining me is... Uh... I guess I'll be Mike Z this week. All right, we got Mike Z this with his game, Skullgirls, and this time we're going to talk about some of the features that are not usually standard in a fighting game, but personally I think they should be in his amazing training mode. It's an all right training mode. It's pretty good. It's, it's all this stuff that I always wished other training modes had. All right, so here we go. Uh, the first one, which is really easy, is when you play again or when you start a match, if you hold left or right, you start in whatever corner. All right. Which is, which is one of those things where it's like, I really want to try this in the, in the right corner, I really want to try this in the left corner. Yeah, no more dashing 40 times to get to the yep. corner. Nope, so there you go, we're in the corner. Um, go back to the center. Awesome, we're in 2012, no need to dash. Yep. Also in this game, another one of those things uh, that games don't do and I don't know why, when you choose random stage, each match is a different stage, see? Right, we're in the uh, lab. Yeah, and we're in, we're in the lab and we were a whole bunch of other places, so mm -hmm. whenever you say play again, you always get a different stage, which is nice because you're not stuck on the same one for forever. So anyway, stuff that this training mode that other has that other training modes don't. Um, one of the really obvious ones is the hitbox display. You can see exactly what your attacks do, how the hitboxes look, why that attack didn't work, and then you can blame me for it, although mm -hmm. I wasn't the one that drew them. Um, so, really easily, um, green is vulnerable. Well, actually, there's two. There's advanced, also. Advanced shows you your physical extent, which is the bit of you that can't overlap another character, and is also the throw vulnerability, so back up. Right, so my throw is as big as that red box is. Right, so if your red box doesn't touch me, then I don't get thrown. If it does, then I do. Um, I'll go back to simple. So the other thing that the hitboxes show you in this game is your various invincibilities and block states. So back, this is high block, right? I'll get hit low, thank you. Uh, this is low block, I'll get hit high. Um, this, pink, is all block. See, because um, in the air you don't have to block high or low, obviously. It also lets you find out things about the game, like the way that the unblockable protection works. Do crouching roundhouse. See, I was pink for a second there. What that means is during the hit stop of the low hits, or the hit stop of high hits, uh, she doesn't have any overheads. Well, I mean, you can jump in. See, I was pink there too. What that means is during the hit stop of hits, you are blocking both ways, which doesn't affect anything single character on single character, but when you throw assists and projectiles in, it protects against humanly unblockable uh, setups. So you can still do them as mix-ups, but you can't do them as totally unblockable by people. Yeah, so there's no guaranteed low assist plus unblockable overhead. Yep. And it also shows you, so like yellow is throw invincible, which means, right, you're in hit stun, I can't throw you. Um, white is invincible, period. So like you can see on a sweep, there's no possibility for me to juggle off of that. Well, you aren't in the corner, let's do that. Right, that won't hit. And you can ground tech as soon as you land. So sweeps cannot be comboed from unless the other person isn't paying any attention. Um, and those are the white boxes. Those are the up. white boxes, yeah. So uh, there's also Strike Invincible, which actually none of these characters have, sorry. Oh, Pain Wheel has it. That super right at the beginning, see it was light blue. Mm -hmm. That means, obviously I'm not blocking at that point, so it's not this. So what that means in that case is that she's strike invincible, she can still be thrown. So I actually like mash throw after the super flash. See? But, like mash, I don't know, light, uh, down light kick. Alright. See, Gets I'm invincible there. Right. So anyway, hitboxes show you a bunch more stuff than you would normally get. Like I would have to provide little indicators for when you're invincible to what. But I don't have to do that. Um, we also have the hit stun bar, which is from Eternal Fighter Zero. Actually, um, and I don't know why other games don't have it, but it's basically, you can see, well, that's not something that has hit stun, but you can see how long the hit stun you have remaining is, when things are going to combo. It also works for block stun, so for example, right? Um, and you can see, uh, okay, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to put you in the corner, which I guess I could have done more easily than this. Uh, you're gonna block this and then push block and then not hold back. So do push block guard cancel off mm -hmm. of it. Oh, actually, switch sides because I want to be in the corner. Ready? Mm -hmm. 
So you can see the block stun disappear at the end of push block. So you know that it's an accurate representation of what's actually happening. When you get let out of block stun when you should have some left, it, it disappears completely. Anyway, this is a really nice thing if you want to figure out when something is going to combo. Um, we don't have hit stun deterioration, so if something is going to combo, it's going to combo. But even in a, in a game where they did have it, it would be really, really useful to have one of those. Um, input display is pretty standard. The way that meter level works is not quite as standard. So if you put it at three, what that means is you have three. Um, during the course of a combo, you build some up and it'll go back to whatever the level was that you put it at, at the beginning of that combo. So for example, if you want to see like, how much meter does this thing give me on block? Block. You can see it because it'll go back to zero each time. I mean, Since it's a you little... have it at zero, you can also test how much yeah. combos build. Right, so I can see like this combo gives me that much meter and then it goes back to zero if I screw up, which I do. Um, that's pretty nice. Uh, so the other stuff, stave state is actually pretty standard now that GGPO has become more common, right? But we have, I'll save state, there we go. Save state in the middle of the combo, can load it whenever I want by pressing select, um, can continue. It saves everything, obviously. I mean, like, I shouldn't have to say that, but some games don't. Uh, we also let you do dummy recording, which is pretty standard, right? Press select and you get control of the character. Do whatever you want as the character, then you have the dummy recording. Press select and it'll play it back, except for she's not hitting me, so it doesn't do the same thing. Um, we do do a bunch of things with dummy recording that other games don't let you do. One of the notable ones is uh, side correction. So some games, if you do like downright uh, punch, you get a fireball if they're facing forward. On, in some games, when you switch sides, it still plays it back as quarter circle toward. And in some games, when you switch sides, it doesn't correct for the sides. So like, for example, it'll be her level three, which is quarter circle back instead. Um, we let you choose which one you want. They're useful for different things. You can test tech punishes like what happens if I make them screw up this motion the wrong way? Um, another thing, this is one of the things that only Skullgirls so far lets you do, which is have the select button be both save state and dummy record at the same time. So for example, let's say I wanted to test out a setup with Valentine, or I wanted to see how to get out of a setup with Valentine. I don't actually have any setups with Valentine, so I'm going to do a really simple one, which is Press select, you get a save state, and now you're in dummy recording mode, see? And that's what I want to be doing. Press select again, record the dummy action. Now you have a matched pair of save state and dummy recording. So, oh look, I can totally get out of that setup. That's pretty cool. So as long as you can do it once, you never have to like put people back in the corner or do all of that stuff. You have things that match right there. You can figure out like, for example, that won't get me, well, actually it will because my startup was slow. But that super won't get me out of that setup because it's throwable, like I said before. Um, to clear the dummy recording in the save state, you can either hold down the select button or you can hold, uh, sorry, light punch and hard kick and hit select and it'll clear everything out. There's a nice red flash so you can tell. Now you can record something. Now you can record something else. Um, one of the really nice things that we have that no other game has had is playback modes for dummy recording as reversal. So what does as reversal do, Mike? So here's, thank you very much, Vanna White. Mm -hmm. um, so here's how this works. I'm gonna record a dummy recording. Here we go, so I'm recording back dash, forward dash, a couple of jumping around, and then let's say kick super, okay? Well, I totally didn't record that because I'm really dumb, and that was, the, that was the test part, but all right. So let me actually record some jumping around and stuff, and then kick super. So now I have that as a dummy recording, uh, and if I press select, then I get all of that in a row, right? But if I push, or if I set it to play back the recording as a reversal, watch this. See that? Instantly went to the super. Instantly went to the super, because what it does is, when you set it to play back as a reversal, it plays all of the inputs that you have given up to the first button press in one frame, which means that super actually comes out on the reversal frame. It doesn't have to do like down, down, forward, forward as the reversal part and then push the buttons later on. So that super actually comes out like immediately when it is supposed to. Um, 
She also has it in the air, so you can do it in the air. The neat bit about this is like you can test what's safe on block, you can test what's safe against reversal 720. They will still do this if you set it to push block guard cancel. Uh, oh, you don't have anyone with the charge move. Dang. Uh, it works for charge moves even because it plays the whole charge in one frame so you can set like reversal napalm pillar and it'll always come out. Uh, another nice thing that you can do by doing it like this is if you just record up for a little bit, you can do your own one block jump. Yeah, so you, this one you can test like frame advantage on yeah. hit or even block. Yeah, so you can see that one's pretty safe on hit. This, pretty safe on hit. Um, if I make her block, or actually if you block, because you can do that too. Uh, right, still safe on block. Nice block. Right, pretty even. Painwheel has some pretty good normals actually. But anyway, so you can do your own version of one block jump um, really easily. Uh, I'm gonna turn that off <laughs> so that I'm not hitting myself with reversals. Um, standard things, dummy action, stand crouch jump, blocking, uh, never after first hit, always or first hit only. So after first hit, standard thing, right? First hit only is the opposite. It lets you test whether something is a block string because as soon as they're not in a block string, they'll stop blocking, they'll stop blocking and get hit, um, which is pretty useful and only one game I've ever seen actually had that. There's also random. I don't know anyone that uses random, but it's always there, so it's there. It's good for hit confirm practice. Um, block type, high, low, all. Oh yeah, so when to push block. Right? Push block on the first hit. I should probably make them block. Push block on the first hit. Um, you can choose any hit all the way up through 10. So like push block on the second hit. Right, does what you'd expect. Uh, you can choose whether they push block once or whether they continually push block. Um, those are useful if you have setups where the push block will not move you away from the character. Um, push block never. Oh yeah, one of the nice ones is throw tech, right? So there's, there's obviously always, which does exactly what you think it's gonna do. Um, there's also after first hit, which means you can start with a throw, but as soon as you try and tick, which I am obviously awful at with pain wheel, they'll tech it. So you can test combos that start with a throw, but you can test them teching in the middle of it. Um, what, whether you can call an assist to cover you or what happens if people get out of your mix-up. There's also random, which is useful for m helping yourself to be able to react to things. Um, ground tech, backward, forward, or random direction, or none, right, will ground tech when available. Um, when to escape infinite combos. So since we have a unique infinite prevention system in this game, um, you can choose on what hit the computer will try to burst. So, oh man, I got to turn off blocking. All right. Right, so this is an infinite. They're never bursting because I turned it on never burst. Um, but if you put it on burst on the first possible hit, then the other person is mashing buttons all the time. So you can figure out like, how do I want to do a burst bait? Uh, Whoops. Oh, I'm the best. I'm sorry, guys. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Whoops. Right. Because I can armor through the burst, and then I can continue my pressure. So you can choose to do that all the way up through the 10th hit, because if you get to 10 hits and they're not bursting, you're probably not doing any kind of setup. <laughs> or you're probably playing someone that's just gonna let you combo them forever. Um, those are the basics of training mode. The on reversal thing is extremely useful for testing uh, block and hit advantages stuff. The hit stun bar is really nice. There's also attack data at the top, which um, does a couple of things that attack data doesn't usually do, so like crouch block. Um, it tells you chip damage, but it also, if you do like multiple uh, block strings that have multiple moves that do chip, it actually tells you the total of all of the chip. Um, it tells you what combo stage you're in with respect to the infinite prevention system, which is something that I'll explain at some other time. 
Um, it's basically about as comprehensive as you could possibly get. So, I mean, I use it all the time, and it's really nice for especially testing setups, figuring out combos, figuring out mix-ups, all that stuff. Um, so, ta-da! Yeah, just figuring out burst baits on itself. Yeah, figuring out good. burst baits is really useful. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Sure. And thanks, you guys, for watching. Hopefully, you learned a few things to test it out on your own. And once again, if you want to follow us on Twitter for more Skullgirls information, I'm at, at Alex, I say two. And Mike? I'm at, at Mike Z says. Uh, S E Z. So there you go. M I K E Z S E Z. Yeah, they never taught Mike how to spell. Spell that right, right? Yeah. And if you're in the Sherman Oaks area and you want to play Skullgirls in person with a lot of people and have some good eats and good fun, including me, which may be in downside, I don't know. Yeah, if you if you don't like Mike, Mike's gonna be there, but we apologize in advance. So check us out there. It's at Fruitsy on Sherman Oaks. Yeah. And it's off uh, the 405 near uh, Ventura's exit, right? Uh, near the 101. Near the 101. Easy enough. You can Google it if you want to go there. So yeah. thanks again Every for watching, Thursday guys. Every Thursday at 7. Sorry. What time? Every Thursday at 7 What PM. day? Thursday, 7 p.m. 7 awesome. p.m. on Thursday. Pacific Standard Time. Pacific Standard Time, yeah. Right. If you're in Hawaii, you're going to have to come here at, like, what is it, yeah, 2? Yeah, you got to plan your itinerary out in advance yeah. if you're coming for Hawaii. Also, it's a long flight, so you probably have to leave at, like, 8 in the morning. Bring a book. But thanks again for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.